guys, it's me, Rachel, here with Senza Tempo County Corso. I'm here with Enzo. He's home now. Um, so he's doing really well. Um, sorry that I haven't uploaded, but I, um, I got a scratch on my retina for my contacts. I've been wearing these new contacts that are supposed to be better because they're supposed to be thinner and more breathable. They cost a fortune more, but, um, I just keep having problems. They just keep scratching my eye. And so I have to like take them out because I'll get like this burning sensation. Yesterday, it just was uh, really bad. And um, so I haven't even been able to put any contacts in or like I can put one in. And um, my eye is like super red and glassy. And, um, and it um, just burns really bad. It waters a lot. And so it's just really nothing that I can do. Um, and it was just painful to even open up my eye. Like I literally slept really late today. Just, just trying, cause like sleeping is what heals it. Like it just, um, usually it doesn't take too long. Like maybe, maybe a day at the very most two, um, of just not wearing a contact. And, um, you have to get through the burning phase first where all it wants to do is burn and, um, feels like you have sand in your eyes. <clears throat> and then, and then once you got past that, then you have to, which really just requires sleeping it off. And then you have to, once you're past that and it's just painful, then you actually have to open your eye and like leave it open to the air and everything to like finish healing. At least that's what I always do. So it's really bad. It hurts. I can't open my windows because if my window is open, the light from the sun like burns my eye um so anyway so it is what it is it is what it is <laughs> so so anyway um so enzo's here he's been here um i'll show you his cage um in a minute it's behind me but he's grooming right now he's preening i guess as we would call it and I do have one of his little toys up there. He doesn't like the chain, but he'll get used to it. He just, it's just a new thing. I tried to film earlier and he wanted to be on me and um, he's still learning, you know, he's he's just a baby. And so he couldn't stay on my shoulder because I'm wearing something where basically my shoulders are kind of bare right now. And so he tried to get up on my head and that was a disaster. Um. So anyway, we try not to even let him up on the shoulder, but lately he's been trying to go back up on the shoulder, which I think is really just a fear response. He's not, he's in a, a, a new place. And so he's really unsure. Um, I haven't let the dogs around him when he's out like this because, um, I can control them, but that also requires that he be calm because if he starts freaking out, then the dogs are going to want to get hyped too. So it's important that they both learn who each other, you know, who each other, hold on, let me um, call you back. Sorry, Reese. Um, so anyway, so they need to get to know each other um, through, the, through the cage first to lose the interest, kind of like how I did with the chickens when I first brought the chickens in. They basically need to get all that curiosity out and basically get bored of one another now before there's any kind of access um that way you don't have to deal with any kind of excitable behavior so that's what i'm doing whenever he's in here he's by himself um as many of you know batista is probably my problem child so i've been having batista in here with him for the most part um cuz i know that he's one of the ones that i'm going to have to watch so what I'll do is like I'll have Enzo out and I'll have him like up on the top of his cage because he has, I'll show you, I have his sheet on my bed so he can like play on my bed. But um, but this is his cage here. And so um, I'll have him up on top and then I'll have Batista in here um, like laying down on my bed, just kind of getting used to the idea of him being here. And, um, and that's been working really well. I know. 
you like the you like the phone. He loves the phone. Um, Enzo. So yeah, he's just preening. He had some. He had a spill earlier. He's been learning how to kind of um, <clears throat> learning how to uh, be on this thing, and so. Um, so anyway, so he's like did, did some like hanging on it and he kind of tumbled down to the bottom where there's some poop. So it kind of got on his wings there and he's cleaning off. And so he's, he's new here, obviously. Um, and so, you know, I'm just, I'm just, um, kind of like, you know, working with him, you know, throughout the day and, um, I'll probably take a towel and kind of wipe off whatever he doesn't get. That just happened. I know. And um, other than that, I've been letting him watch um, Einstein. <laughs> As any of you maybe have seen Einstein. Um, and just kind of playing with him. Like I said, I've got his, the sheet that I have on my bed right now is the one that I put over his cage at night. And so I put that on there because he's not potty trained yet. And I don't want him actually going to the bathroom on my bed. So um, I try to, to, you know, pay attention. Like I'll wait for him to go to the bathroom on his perch first. And then I'll bring him over to my to my bed and just kind of let him hang out for a bit. Um, I have noticed that his behavior has changed a lot since he was in the bird store. He has really gotten a lot more friendly with me um, and Savannah. And um, behaving more with us like he did with the woman who hand fed him, hand reared him. Um, and I had I had suspected that that would be the case, that while he was in the store, he just really didn't see us as any different as anybody, as any other just kind of um, fair weather friend, for lack of a better word. So now that he's here with us, now he, you know, he knows, okay, this is this is my family, this is who they are. And whenever he, um, I will say he hasn't been at all as attitude -y as he was in the store. Like he would get really attitude. -y. He actually gave me a pretty good bite. Um, <clears throat> and the woman who, her name is Kathy, the woman who raised him, watched him. Like he was like, I had him on my hand like this and, um, or maybe yeah, like that or something. And he reached down and he grabbed my pinky right here. And he didn't let go. I mean, he grabbed and he was just sawing on it, you know, really, really biting me hard. And she grabbed him, you know, by his little head there and lifted him off. And she's like, uh-uh, no. And she let him know that wasn't okay. And so she basically told me that he was really pushing boundaries. And um, and so, you know, there's really nothing you can do. You can't discipline birds like you can dogs. They don't, they don't get it. All you can do is put them up. But unfortunately, because... You know, he was where he wanted to be, which was on his cage. Or if you if you put him down in a pet store, he was just in a room full of bird toys. So he would just march on over to a, to a toy. So there was really no way for me to discourage that type of behavior. But now that he's here, um, when he misbehaves himself, you know, I can put him back in his cage. Um, you know, or I can like if he's if I'm interacting with him on my bed, I can put him on his perch and just kind of, you know, do my own thing for a little bit and, you know, kind of, um, that's how you do it is they really want your attention. So by removing that, then that, then it in itself is a discipline. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, um, other than that, I mean, he's been doing really good. Like I said, he hasn't even had the forms of, um, of aggression that he had whenever he was at the store with us here. He has gotten a little attitude -y at times, but I mean, he's a bird, you know what I mean? And other than that, um, trying to think, he's just been playing with his toys. Um, we've been feeding him. I need to call. There's a gentleman that called me about helping me with his chop, and I'm going to do that. Um, I just have been so, like, literally under the weather with this whole eye thing that it just... It's weird, like, when you wear contacts, I don't know, those of you that, if you're like this, let me know, but when my eyes are messed up, it's like, it makes me not really want to do much of anything, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I might as well be regular sick, you know what I'm saying? Like, only being able to have one contact, and especially because I have really bad vision, I have negative eight vision, 
I think it's like actually 850 now, negative 850 now. Um, if I only have one contact in, I literally, I, my depth perception is off. Like it's just, I think a part of me, like an instinctual part of me knows that I'm not at my best. Like I'm, um, impaired and so I get a little irritable and I don't want to do anything other than just kind of like hide in my room so anyway I wish I had a little pirate patch that would be super awesome um because that would help me you know what I mean if I had a little pirate patch just to be able to like do stuff because part of the problem is that it's the other eye being open that kind of causes the problem if I only have one eye open then it's not so bad the other eye being open causes my vision to be, my depth perception to be off, things like that. And so I um, have a harder time with it. So anyway, um, yeah. so I'm really glad to see him cleaning like this. He hasn't, he actually, he ha pardon me, he actually hasn't went um, and cleaned himself this much since I got him. I think he's actually starting to feel more comfortable. Which makes me happy because birds need to preen. They need to be clean. Um, so it looks like he's doing a pretty good job here. And then right now I'm cooking him some oatmeal. I, I have, um, <clears throat> a gluten allergy. I have celiac disease. And so I have like gluten free oats. Um, and so anyway, so we're boiling some oats for him so he can get some calcium from that. And we've been giving him vegetables, but like I said, I do need to call this gentleman about doing his chop just because I want to make sure we get him everything. I'm trying to give him top of the line food. <clears throat> I did buy the Bird Tricks um, books for um, for diet and all that good stuff. And um, so, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys an update because like I said, I'm not not feeling too hot right now. And, um, I realized that with YouTube revenue being down so low right now, I can't afford to just like not upload for days. So I figured I would at least get something up for you guys. And like I said, this isn't the introductionary video that I wanted to do with Enzo. I wanted it to be more like, you know, happy and where we were being more interactive with him, but <clears throat> pardon me, but I just really want to lay back down and close my eyes try to get this over with because I do have an appointment tomorrow to take Blondie into the vet and I really need both eyes to drive so I need to rest this eye so that I can um so that I can put a contact in it tomorrow to drive and I think what I'm going to do is just purchase the old contacts that I was using and not use these these ones that I'm using anymore because these ones suck and I've only had them in <clears throat> I've only been using them now for maybe a couple months and I've just been plagued with eye problems because of them. Like every week, maybe one of my eyes gets like, I have to take my contact out early because I can start to feel it like, burning a little bit. And if I pull it out fast enough, it'll be a little sore for the night, but it'll be fine. I won't have like this big of an injury. Like, Oh, like I have now. You all right? Are you okay? Enzo? Um, so anyway, so, um, so yeah, so yeah, I just got to go back to what I was wearing. I don't, it doesn't matter if these ones are like, you know, thinner or not. If, if they're messing my eyes up, then it really doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm got to be doing more damage by what's happening than by having a thicker contact, you know, and maybe I can look at a different brand. I will say when I went to my doctor's visit, there was another brand that she wanted me to try, but that's whenever the whole th Corona thing happened. And so I didn't get to go pick up those test ones because they didn't have any um, for me because my prescription is so, so heavy that um, a lot of times they won't have my prescription and stuff. And so she had them ordered in. And then by the time that they got in, we were, we were all on lockdown. So I haven't gotten to go pick them up yet. But in the meantime, I'm going to go back to what I was using and then I'll try the other ones she's got. And if any of you have any suggestions, if any of you are using some contacts and they're really great, um, please let me know because I really want the best for my eyes. I've been avoiding getting LASIK um, or any type of eye surgery because it, it actually scares me. And um, But I do, I have had a problem where my, basically like the veins 
I guess around my eyes are getting thick. And so like it can get to a point where you can't wear contacts. So that's why a thinner contact was something that I was interested in. Um, and if you've had LASIK and you've had good, you know, a good experience with that, let me know about that too. Cause maybe I'm being scared for nothing. You know, maybe I'm actually like being more risky with the contacts than I would be if I were to just have surgery. I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, I could use all the help that I could get on this. So hope you guys are having a great day and I'll talk at you later. Bye.